Hello and welcome back to my little corner of the universe. If you're new here, my name's Paul and this is where I get to show you all the fun things I'm working on. Speaking of fun, I thought I'd show you today a little project I've been working on this week and it is a puppet. So uh, what prompted me to make this, this little um, puppet is I wanted to use this puppet to tell uh, stories to my bedtime stories to my granddaughter and so I designed this puppet and modeled him on a um, a cross between a pug and a French bulldog and I'm still working out what uh, well still uh, trying to decide what colors I'm going to paint uh, this puppet but I thought uh, while I'm working on it, I'll show you where I'm at and how it's looking and how it works and how it goes together. So I printed this puppet in PLA at a layer, layer height of 0.16 millimeters. And um, each piece took quite a bit of time to print. I think the head, uh, just this head piece here was about, uh, I think about 30 hours from, from memory or yeah, about 30 hours. Uh, and I did have some issues with the print. Um, yes, as you can see here on the body section, for some reason, the uh, the printer just stopped feeding filament for uh, for a bit, and um, then it's just started again. Now that happened on this piece, and I checked the STL files. And they were all sound and solid and there's no gaps or breaks in the actual file. And the same thing happened on, on the head. Now, um, you can see it actually happened here and that the piece broke off. So this piece was originally like, like so. And it had a gap the same as the body piece. So, I don't know what caused it. I don't know if there was a um, a section of the roll of filament that got caught up and it wasn't feeding, or whether there was a problem with the um, extruder. I, I just don't know what happened. I've printed things since these two parts, and they've been fine. So uh, I just don't know. So the head is made up of two parts, and I, I don't know if you can see in there. You can see I've modelled in the tongue into the head and I've created this jaw piece as a separate piece that hinges uh, and open and closes the mouth. And so what happens is my hand goes up into the puppet and my fingers just control that jaw like so. And if we look at the puppet together, the head goes on like that. And this little buckle piece here is just that's printed separately and just pressed on to the collar. And I've also printed this piece here, which is which goes up inside the 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 uh, body. And then my hand just um, it rests on my hand, and and that's where how I support the puppet. And then I can control the jaw from there. And um, basically, what's going to happen is. If I put the puppet all together, the puppet will be to camera like so. And I've also printed a book that the uh, puppet's going to read from. And I can control his jaw like that. And the book will be um, in front of him as he's reading. And uh, you can see I've, I've just modelled the hands onto the book. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, so it looks like he's, he's holding the book, but in reality it's just two little hands uh, moulded onto the book. So really all it, all it will be will be shot and framed like this. And I'll, I'll crop it in to show you how it will be sh sh uh, shot and framed. And uh, the puppet will be reading the story um, uh, just like so. So, uh, and also, if he, uh, when it's time for story time, I've also modelled a little arm so he can just check the time. And um, again, you know, that'll be uh, a close-up 
um, of him just checking the time. Um, and yeah, so it's just just a bit of fun, really. It's just a, a, a device to tell my granddaughter, my two-year-old granddaughter, uh, children's stories, or bedtime stories. And whether these, I'll make these videos specifically for her uh, using this puppet. And whether these videos will ever see the light of day, I don't know. But um, she'll get to see them. But whether I'll share them or not, I, I don't. I'll, I'll wait and see. But uh, for now, they're just for her. So um, yeah. I thought I'd just show you that and, and show you um, what I've been working on for the past week. The body took about oh, another 30 hours to print um, and this took you know, probably 20 hours. So there's a lot of, um, a lot of print time and all together all these parts uh, used up pretty, well, pretty much a whole roll of filament. So um, I think printing at 0 .6, 0 0.16 millimeter layer height is what uh, has caused um, caused it to to take so much time, and also to use so much filament. But I, I'm really pleased with the results and the way it's come up, especially like the the text on the book here. And I'm using the the Cura ironing uh, feature to iron the top surfaces of the the models, or or, or all the parts I'm printing. And uh, as you can see there, it does. It does a beautiful job. I get a really nice finish on the bottom from the build tack on the the printer, and now the the top is is matching the bottom, which is which is fantastic. And you can see here I've got a cutout in the bottom of this book, um, which is so that I can uh, put this screwdriver into the bottom of the book and just hold the book up like so, so that when the puppets reading I can just crop that that um, that screwdriver off the bottom of the book or crop it so that you just don't see that in the shot uh, so I think that should work should work pretty well yeah I think uh, that's it so that's what I've been working on this past week oh and the I did want to talk about the uh, the jaw mechanism the key to to making this work really nicely is I'll show you the a glimpse of the 3D files. Uh, I'll cut it in now. But the key was to to ensure that I had the pivot point of the jaw in the correct location, so that it um, it just pivoted down and away from the mouth, but kept close to this collar section here. And I think it works quite well. And you can see I've modelled little teeth into the the bottom of the jaw, which I'll paint up. And uh, yeah, it's all come together quite nicely. I, I used some support on the bottom of this, which I've got to clean up. Uh, but I, 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 in the way I printed this, printed this part, I don't think it actually needed support. So, but it, anyway, it's not something you're going to see. It, that's all inside and and hidden from from view. All right, I think that's it. That's it to show you on this one. So, uh, uh, just a big thank you to everyone that's been watching the videos, and and uh, especially to a couple of uh, tips I've had on my. Uh, printverygood.com blog site so I really appreciate that that does help that'll help towards uh, some more rolls of filament and I've been looking um, on Amazon at the that CC DIY supplier and I see they've got um, at the moment a roll of ABS on on Amazon for about 24 bucks I think it is and there's a roll of P uh, roll of PETG for about 34.95 so I'm thinking that I might buy a roll of each of those next and uh, start printing some stuff in that material. I've never tried PETG and I've never tried ABS, so it'll be interesting to see how it goes. But uh, I, I want to start printing some parts for my motorcycle, so I want to use um, something that's going to hold up better than PLA out in the sunshine and the weather. And uh, I'll, I'll do some tests between uh, ABS and PETG. All right. Well, that's it for this video. Um, thanks very much for watching. Thanks everyone for your support. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.